You're watching the Hampton Classic Horse Show on WVVH-TV, Hampton's Television. So it starts left lead up along the shorter tents. Uh, one to two is a nice, it's going to be five strides. Uh, rather inviting for the first two jumps and then the course really starts. Uh, roll back to number three which is very tall, meter sixty vertical. Uh, right lead over to the triple. I think it rides really scopy. Steady one, steady two, vertical oxer vertical and then a straight line again to another meter sixty vertical. Um, you don't have a lot of time to catch your breath. Uh, then a very difficult line to the water. Uh, forward to the water, delicate to the jump after the water. Not as wide, but quite high. Rolling back, single jump. And then it's, it's sort of like an S-turn. This is very hard. Your Hermes Oxer, one of the widest jumps on course to a tall wall. And then we're going to see the pair of in-ground Liverpools. This will be difficult. Um, and then it's not over yet. Uh, coming back to the last line. Again, very tall vertical to the final jump, which is the widest oxer on course uh, towards the end gate. So it's a long course, a lot of jumps. It's a great track. We are now at the moment we have all been waiting for the start of today's $300,000 Doha Inc. Grand Prix. First, our ringmaster, Alan Keeley. Great. In the ring now, Olympic Peter silver Leon. medalist, WVVH broadcast partner, Peter Leone, and a young horse for him, yes. Donner, a horse that I guess this will be the biggest test this horse has ever faced. This will be the biggest track. Uh, this is a lovely horse. It, it, it had a little bit of bad luck in the qualifier on Friday, so I would say that um, it's almost even harder that he didn't get to do the whole class on Friday, but Peter is as good as they get as jockeys, so uh, he knows his horse well. Mary, what is the allowed time for this course? You know, I do not know because when I walked the course, they hadn't posted. 86 seconds, they just 86. announced. Okay, let us watch, and as Peter makes his round, please let us know what, what he's facing. I certainly will. Peter, of course, will be joining us shortly up here in the booth after he finishes his round and takes a few moments to take care of his horse. So as I said when, I, when we reviewed the course, the first two jumps, I would say, are inviting. I think it's a beautiful way to start the course. Um, not too high, not too wide, right on stride. Um, you know, it's always nice to start out that way. And then the course gets meatier and meatier as it goes. Triple combination here. Yeah. Beautifully ridden, horse jump beautifully. He opted to do forward five. I think we're mostly going to see five strides in that line off of the triple. Now the water line, I think we're going to see two different numbers of strides. Six, most of them will do six. Six again, great. So far, so good. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how the time allowed is. Although 86 seconds seems quite generous, this is a very long course. Um, although the time allowed's been beautiful this week, it has not been so tight. Five, six, that was his plan when he walked. Beautifully executed. Wow. Okay. Wow. And then the key with the young horse now, keep your focus. Crowd is clapping, listen to me. Uh, and I think that caught him there. Yeah. You know, they think they're done, they're getting tired, they're getting fatigued, they listen to the crowd. That was too bad, that was beautiful. Oh, what a brilliant ride. One time fault in addition to the one knockdown, but really an outstanding he ride. He should be 
a beautiful ride. I think he should be very, very pleased with his horse. It may be a young and experienced horse, but we're talking about a seasoned veteran rider, someone who's done it all. He's represented this yes. country in the World Championships, in the Olympics, in the Pan Am Games, in World Cup Finals. Peter Leone, brilliant performance on Donner. So here is young Californian rider, Lindsay Douglas. She came here to the Hampton Classic last year for the first time ever and had yes. a brilliant day in the Grand Prix, wound up in the jump off, finished yes. fifth overall, and here she is again on Butterfly Tibri Z. <laughs> Lindsay rides with Lucy Davis, I believe. I believe so, yes. You mentioned it's a long course, isn't it? Yes, it's a long course um, that requires a lot of stamina, both mental stamina for the horse and physical stamina for both the horse and rider. Um, and and the longer the course, ah, the time allowed, you have to keep rolling. I, I, I think that Lindsay so far looks a little bit like time faults if she doesn't pick it up. She opted to do seven strides to the water. Peter did six. Um, that could also play a factor for the time allowed. There, she was quite neat. Saved some time. There we see the front rail of the Air Maze Oxer came down. This line is tricky. She also did one more step than Peter did. I, I think she's going to have time faults. It looks a little bit slow to me, but we'll see. That jump is also hard. It, the ground drops a little bit. They lose their focus. And then the last comes down as well. And, and time. So a total of 18 faults for Lindsay Douglas. Three knockdowns, foot in the water, two-time penalty, score of 18 for Lindsay. And next up will be Sarah Siegel. Sarah rides out of Flemington, New Jersey, a protege of Olympic gold medalist Chris Kapler. And she is in the ring on Chimera, a 10-year-old mare. So what's going to be interesting is after Sarah goes, the course designer has the option to change the time allowed, either tighten it or lengthen it. I, I think he's going to keep it as is, because I think that the first two, Lindsay I thought was quite slow. I thought Peter was a little bit wide in places, right choice for him on a young horse. Right. Um, but I, in my opinion, the time allowed is not going to change, and I think the time allowed is a, a touch of a factor. I think it's a little bit tight today. Gotcha. But we'll see. Which, as you said, hasn't been the case most of the Correct. week. Correct. But then again, today we have $300,000 at stake. We have the Longine Rider Challenge. Exactly. We have Longine FEI Worldwide Rider Ranking, Ranking points. points. An awful lot at stake. It should be a challenge. Wow. Sarah is, is always a rider that works out of the gallop. You know, she, has, she works out of a good look. So... There we had B down of the triple. And that to me is also a little wide. We have yet to see a clear round. Three that riders is in. I, I'm not going to make a prediction of how many are going to be clear today, but I, I am maybe eight. Oh, to come on. I think about eight to ten. Oh, wow, that tight, huh? Yeah, I do. It's, it's pretty hard today. Okay. Good. Clear through that pair of double liver pulls. For some horses, that can be a challenge. All the ones we've seen have jumped it quite well. I think that's the jump that's going to come down the most today. Um, 
the Doha vertical and last jump fine going towards home she jumped it well also with time fault so let's see let's see what they do with the time allowed so if the time allowed is uh, lengthened to 89 seconds Let's say, this, is it retroactive to the three first riders? Yes. It is. Yes. Now, this is a, uh, a rider that's excited us uh, yes. from the get-go. Adrian Sterlich. Adrian's had a great week here, a great few years in her riding career, a member of the U.S. team at the, at the WEG and the gold medal team. This is a relatively new horse for her really talented horse in her string and the uh, Longine rider challenge is uh, she in competition for that yes. it was between her and richie maloney yes. yes i don't have the standings in front of me but i think she's maybe in second for that standing so and the points today in this class are double points for that so uh that's a real bonus to win that This is a really beautiful jumping horse. It's just such a beautiful, great technique. So scopy, so light. Good. Adrian has a lot of experience on big tracks with the time allowed. So I think she's gonna be a good reference for our time. Great, now you need to turn and get right over to the next jump, which she's doing. That's the key with the time allowed. It's, you have to be clicking along in your head without rushing and forcing your horse to have an error. So uh, that's the challenge of a tighter time allowed. Now the Doha jump has been a problem today. A few rails yes. have gone down there. Why is that? We'll I be think coming that, up to it. I think there are a few factors. It is very high. Um, it's also a little bit on an angle. She did it. She did it. <laughs> and you hear our crowd is excited about that. Oh, oh, last jump go. down, but she's four falls. That'll, that'll go into first place within the time allowed. It's interesting when you're watching the footprints, where they're turning. She was very, very neat and efficient everywhere. But getting back to that vertical, it gets tall, which is a factor, but the placement, it's just so delicately on that angle, angling towards the last jump. I think they just shift instead of jump up over. Adrian's horse did it beautifully. And then the last jump, not a joke, going towards the end gate, they think they're done. They have to really fight to keep that last jump up. Next we have Quentin Judge on his horse, H.H. Quator. This is a really big, very different type of horse than we just saw uh, from Sarah, even from Peter from Adrian. This is just a much bigger, longer, very scopy horse. I think sometimes with these very big horses, although you're covering a lot of ground, you're always thinking about the time allowed. Jump the first three jumps beautifully. That's a challenge, the triple. Um, vertical oxer is always the biggest test for a horse's ability. So we're talking straight jump, spread jump, and then another jump after that. So, and the distance is, is steady. So you have to arrive at the triple just right. And the horse needs to really stretch it be. So if there is no, which is hypothetically, it's a long shot, no clear riders round. It'll go to the four falters. Yes, then they will jump off the four falters.
Okay, so Quentin decided it was enough for today, save his horse for another horse show. There are a lot of big shows coming up. Um, so now we're next to the riders on the list. Gabriella Reuter, I believe this is, on Atticus Diamant. This is a um, younger rider. One of I don't know exactly her age, but she's a younger rider in the class. Uh, rides, rides really nicely. And uh, this is a big track for her. She's sort of been taking her time moving up the ranks. Uh, rides with Chris Kapler and Sarah Siegel. And uh, Gabrielle is representing Chile. Yes. A lot of international riders here at the Hampton Classic to be part of this $300,000 Doha Inc. Grand Prix. Nice money. Yes. Good prize money. Great venue. Brings out the best who want to be part of uh, this does. event. It really does. The sport has become so international. Riders come from all over the world, and we think nothing of putting our horses on an airplane and flying them over. So um, although this particular rider is based in the U.S., oh, that, that was obviously not what anyone wants to happen there. She just didn't have enough momentum didn't have enough momentum to get the sort of up and over the B element really stopped her horse so now what she has to do if she decides to keep going is she has to start the triple from the beginning a B C so they reset the jump and it looks like she will restart so now she starts again at the triple has another shot at it and the time is held to the moment that then they relieve the ground from the triple. Good. Stretch. There we go. Good girl. Now you rode on this course uh, this week. What I do you think did. of our new course? I love it. The field rides beautifully. It feels great. The horses have been jumping well. Um, I think they did a wonderful job with the field. And we had so much rain a few days ago and the he field held up beautifully. So I think it was a job very well done. This is what you this is what you want to see. Uh, you never want to see a horse and a rider make a mistake, but you like to see them rebound. So although the jumps are coming down for a horse and rider like this, they want to get the experience. They want to learn from their mistakes. And uh, I think that the combination is just learning to maneuver and, and manage the higher, higher jumps. It's important to finish and feel that sense of accomplishment. It is. I think it's also, you know, you use your judgment. Uh, sometimes you feel like it's too much for your horse and then you maybe don't finish. The right thing to do is not to finish. But in an instance that we just saw, um, horse and rider kept going. They learned from it. And, uh, and that's a really positive experience. Next rider in. Another international rider. Do you know like Freddy Vasquez? I don't know him well. Um, he competes for Puerto Rico, I believe. He's also based in the U.S. He is also he is a professional. Freddy is a professional has a has a very successful business, but has also helped in the jumper rings by Chris Kapler. I noticed Chris is walking the course with him and with him in the schooling area. It's always nice to have someone who you trust and admire helping you. I thought Freddie's horse jumped really beautifully in the qualifier. Great, triple, great. Vertical after the triple, no problem. He looks a little bit wide to me. I'm going to call this as another round with some time faults.
That's the challenge of that line. Stretch over the water element and then get them back. I thought his horse didn't quite come back enough uh, in a soft enough way to jump the net jets oxer clean. This Aramaeus jump comes up quickly. Also, it just, he lost the track. He lost the rhythm. He lost his distance a little there, but you have to keep going. They jump that jump a little low. That's definitely the jump that's going to come down the most. Uh, you, have, you really have to place them there as a rider to jump that one clean. I mean, this is something truly amazing. We're, uh, we've had seven riders yes. and yet not a clear round. When I walk the course, I, I um, we have a young horse that did the qualifier on Friday and was amazing. And we knew today was going to be a little too much for him. And when I walked the course, I was pleased with our decision not to show. It's a hard course today. It's a hard today. course. It's big. However, however, if there is anyone who can do it, our next competitor, Andrew Wells. Yes. And he's fast. Yes. And you have to be fast in order to navigate this uh, most difficult course. I agree. I think Andrew is going to make a good shot at it. You're watching the Hampton Classic Grand Prix here on WVVH TV. And this is the $300,000 Doha Inc. Grand Prix. good it's it's interesting to watch you know he did a really nice sort of neat turn back on the next jump you really have to get the time allowed done from the get-go um, I think towards the end of the course for that last line you need to to have made the time up to take your time to jump it clean a little touch wide there I think Good over the water, up over the net jets. Yeah, and he's just very efficient. That was, you know, right back on your next jump. Mm. Horse jumped it a little low. And we're thrilled to be joined by Peter Leon. Peter, you were our first person in. And everyone who followed you, no one has yet been able to post a clear round. This is one heck of a course, as you can attest to. Well, there's nothing more exhilarating than getting out into the middle and center ring of the Hampton Classic Sunday Grand Prix. The buzz out there of the crowd, the energy, the sound of the call. I mean, this is what we as show jumping riders, this is what we live for. I mean, it doesn't get any more exciting. We have a sold out crowd here. We've it's got beautiful. And I thought Peter and his horse, Peter, I thought your horse jumped so beautifully. I thought you rode that just right. Well, thank you, Mary. He's, he's a young horse. <clears throat> he's never jumped a track like this, I know. of this size or dimension or height, let alone in a venue. As, like this. Uh, of the, I agree, and we were explaining a little classic. that I thought you had bad luck the other day, so I thought it was all the more brilliant for both of you. Yeah, we, we had a, there was a big blank of question marks as to how today was going to go, but I have a lot of confidence in that yeah. little horse. He may look like a big horse, but he's a little, he's little guy. I know. But he's got a big jump and a yes. big heart and a, and a lot of try. But uh, we've got a great Grand Prix. Um, Mary, I'm sure you filled everyone in. Michelle yes. Valiancourt, the course designer. There's more meter 60 verticals out there than there are less than meter 60 verticals. That's correct. Basically, all the verticals are meter 60 height, except for the verticals associated with the combinations. Right, meter 55 at A, meter 55 at the, the B element of the of double, the double Liverpools. Liverpools. And in the ring right now, Oh. We've got Vasco Flores on Dubai. This is a this is a real blood horse, Mary. It is. Have you, have you watched it a little bit? I have. I have watched it with the previous rider. Um, I watched it quite a bit when Mavis Spencer showed it. I've always liked this horse, but it is a blood horse. 
I think it's a blood horse, maybe a little sensitive in the bridle. I don't think it's the easiest horse to navigate the course. A super athlete, but perhaps not the easiest one out there to ride. It's a brave horse. It's got a, like you said, Mary, a difficult mouth. And Vasco is a, a really experienced up and coming rider. He did have the first jump down. I didn't notice with the second jump that, that it came It must down have been the jump after the triple combination. Yeah, we don't have a and great view of that. And that's a bit of a flat five, yes. which can get easy, jumping right into yes. the scoreboard, the corner, the crowd. Yeah. And the horses do take note of it. They, they do notice the fact that there's just the, the clinking of glasses, the, the chatter yes. of voices, and the moving and scuffling of feet. And all it takes is that one minute that they lose their focus or concentration and you're moving up to a careful vertical. That's all it takes for it yes. to come and down. And we, we sure do everything we can to have our horses focus on the jumps. And everything about this arena brings their attention everywhere but the jumps. And what about the, uh, the time? We we're talking about that, Mary and I. I mean, is that, is it too tight, 86 seconds? No, I, I think the time allowed for a, a, the Hampton Classic Grand Prix is, is so spot too. on. I agree. <clears throat> you know, the, the, the horses and riders are so darn good that if you gave them a pretty open time allowed, uh, there'd be an awful lot of clear rounds, I even agree. though the jumps are huge. I agree. And, and I can tell you for a fact that if the time wasn't tight, and I had a guess that the time was tight and I was still over. After I jumped the double Liverpools, I made a neat turn and I left one out. I mean, I, if there wasn't a tight time allowed, I would have done one more stride to the Doha vertical that I ended up having down. Exactly. So the, the tight time allowed creates rails. Forces mm -hmm. and error. And that, that really is adds to the difficulty. Now in the arena, we've got Harden Jack Tal on Jolie Jumper. Good from one to two. Yeah, well, what I was saying, Peter, for, for our audience to watch is is where they're placing these riders. Uh, Adrian did it really well. Harden is really good with the time allowed. They're the, the Where they're placing their horses on the landing on the way to the next yeah, jump. Every, That's how you get the time allowed place done. You can carve save your turn. A little bit of time. You know, and it would be really nice to take your time coming to this meter 60 vertical before the water. But <laughs> you don't you have, can't. yeah, exactly. You don't have the luxury of time. Oops, okay. Oh, he jumped yeah. that well. And that six, which walked a little bit flat and loose after the right. water, in the end is riding yes. tight. And that's one of the things when you go a little later in the order, you get a you chance have, to see yes. how it rides versus how it walks. And what I think is uh, from day to day, from <laughs> class to class, when you're getting up to the featured class, I went first in the class yesterday. It basically rode just the way it walked. Whereas I think today's course w is more technical than yesterday. Obviously it's bigger. Um, I, I think today was hard to go again. again. It's now basically what, what, come down. What Harden did is he left the stride out to the double Liverpool. So that helped him on the clock. <clears throat> but you know, that rolled back on that meter 62 Doha vertical. That is our lead sponsor for today's class, isn't yeah. it, Marty? Yes. Our $300,000 Doha Inc. Grand Class Grand Prix, Hampton Classic Grand Prix, and yes, Doha. On one hand, sponsor, and that's been a very on, on, difficult on one, on one hand, the sponsor would like the competitors to enjoy jumping his jump. But when it's the one that everyone's having down, the riders notice it, the crowd notices exactly. it. So maybe the fact that that's, that jump has come down about the most so far today is uh, a good thing for Doha. Jimmy Toronto and Glasgow to Moose is next. Jimmy's had a lot of wins on this horse. And uh, I know how excited he is to be on this horse jumping on Grand Prix Sunday here in Bridgehampton. This is a very scopy horse, um, has a little bit its own technique, and Jimmy and Glasgow have really forged a, a very, very excellent partnership. He had the last two jumps down in the Friday qualifier. Other than that, he had a brilliant round. Here's the triple combination. Oh my goodness. 
I mean, with the head on view, it was a little bit difficult to see what happened. Maybe he came in a little bit a little quiet, yeah. and the back rail of B was far away. Yeah. He certainly I, yeah. came down on the back rail of B, and then the C element was really far away. Looks like Jimmy's going to jump fence one and call it a day. The riders going to head over to the number one fence, and we'll You know, we all go through these ups and downs, um, and we're all out there in the trenches together, you included, and your partner Peter Lutz. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Mary. So. You know, we're, we're there to support each other when, uh, when we have days like this. And we're there to, you know, to give each other a pat on the back when we have a good day. I agree. Next fighter, our youngest in the lineup, 18-year-old Brian Mulgrave, joining us on the Grand Prix field. Now, this kid is quite a talent. He is, Tell and us he's about been, Brian. Brian is, uh, he's probably 19. He's won the medal finals, the McClay finals. Uh, USCT finals and has had a lot of success at this level at his age. He had an amazing, he had amazing wins in Kentucky. Um, I think he's well mounted, well trained. He's a fast rider. Mike very, very McCormick fast. from Flower Mound, Texas is his trainer. He's yeah. done a phenomenal amazing job, job with this young man. Let's see what he can do. He's had a little hard luck all week. He hasn't I uh, led any of the victory gallops, but it would be no surprise for this for young man I agree if he's to put in a today. clear round. It looked on our screen that he was a little wide to number three. I thought so too. The triple combination has caused problems to date. A little rub, but it's still up. The five strides, this is jumping right into the cameras, right into the corner of the ring. I, I think he looks a little, well, a little wide, even there. Has the time so far? I don't oh, know. I think he's it's a little bit a close little at bit. the water. Yes, he had it, and, and the, the net jets after. is down. But the only way you get good at jumping at this level of sport in an in a in a center stage arena like is this keep is doing by it. doing it. He was quite efficient there, and I think that sort of a very that interesting error. serpentine line that. Our course designer is set up. Uh, you got a meter 60 vertical, and then you have a, a, like an elbow roll back to a very wide Hermes Oxer, and then another L, you know, elbow dog leg turn on a very tall, spooky wall. But even though Brian's not going to get a piece of the, the money today, it's very exciting that I think so he's too. getting this kind of mileage. I would agree. And you know, the, the beauty of coming to show at this horse show is you can be showing all year long, but your horse might not be getting experience with this kind of environment. Right. And On I think grass, that that's been coming a little bit into play. So it's a, it's a big event, the big open water, the crowds, the noise, the cheering. I think horses and riders need to learn how to deal with that as well. Peter, for our viewers, Stephen Blumen is in, and Stephen was with us. We, we had some week. nice time up here in the booth together with Stephen. Very, very knowledgeable young horseman. Uh, is a member of the Blumen family. There's two brothers and three cousins. Or three brothers and two cousins. And I can't keep well. track. And, <laughs> and in this class today is Stephen, and Ilan, his brother, his cousin, and, and Daniel, his brother. Daniel, his brother, and yes. his cousin, Ilan. Could you imagine? Family affair. Here Blumen goes Stephen. Now this is a three very, entrance. very big horse. I was riding next to him in the it's schooling there, and I'm like, oh my goodness. Large. I was looking up to him, and he's got a huge, huge step, a lot of scope. And and that actually suits this field I and agree. and a course yes. like today. It's the that first time we've seen that jump come down, actually, I think. That meter 60 vertical off that tight turn early in the course uh, really catches the horses by surprise. So with a big horse like this, Mary, you have to remember to keep moving. They you, tend to be a little slow across do, the ground. You know, we, when Quentin was going, and he's on a sort of large, rangy, scopey horse, but those horses you always have that clock running in your head about the time allowed. The power is unbelievable, the way he skied the water. 
That's a big jump. That's a meter 60 vertical. I mean, that, the horses are jumping it like it's just any other jump. Really incredible. And this is that serpentine line we were talking about. This is a little more than a meter 60 high, a big wall. He does the seven strides. This horse is very brave, too. It is. He's got one down, and if he can be in under the time of allow, which it doesn't look like, I it's 86 so. seconds. He's going to have a few time faults. Yeah. You know, he's one jump from home. He's already going to be at six penalty points. And the last is down. <laughs> so, you know, even though the, in the end his score was 10 and he had the last jump down, it's a pretty darn good round. I think so too. I thought the horse jumped beautifully and I think he did a nice job. It's, a, it's, a, it's really something about this level of sport. You can go in there and have two down or you know, and a couple time faults and still feel like, wow, I did great. <laughs> yeah, and I think sometimes that happens and, and uh, you're so, you think your horse felt so great and maybe a few and things did didn't go great. your way. So but it's, it was good. Yeah, and, the, and you're proud of that and you're happy with that. But again, we have yet to have a clear round. When I, I called it not that many clear because I walked it and I... It, it well, that's part. okay with Mary me. I mean, right now, uh, sitting I, I'm second, sitting right? second on the leaderboard and <laughs> I'll be really happy if I can end up 12th. The odds are I'll be somewhere around 15th or 16th, but that's show jumping. I don't know. You might squeak in with the ribbon. Now, we have 19-year-old Annabelle Rivera. She had a really good day she out did. here yesterday in the Saturday Grand Prix. She rides with Max Amaya. She really rode with the poise of more like a 29-year-old. Yes, I agree. And I thought their plan for the jump off the other day was really smart. You know, it, it wasn't belly to the ground. She went as fast as she was comfortable. I think Max Amaya does a, a really great job training these younger riders. She's really taking on this course very well. The horse jumped sure jumped so the water well, didn't wow. she? Clear through fence eight. Seven jumps to go. Again, the course designer, Michelle Viancourt, has you turning and jumping and turning and jumping and turning and jumping. You come around one turn, you got a meter 60 vertical in your face. You come around another turn, you got a meter 55 square oxer, meter 60 wide, you know, right, right in front of you. It's really, part of the course designer strategy to create poles. I agree. But she's pretty good on the clock. We'll see what happens. If she can get in there under the 86 seconds, she's going to really be in good shape. Oh, the last is down. What a great ride, great experience for 19-year-old Annabelle Revers, that was Peter, you've super. been part of the Hampton Classic for a number of years. You've been a competitor here. Uh, can I say that this is one of the toughest courses I've ever seen for a well, Grand Prix Sunday? It's certainly one of the tallest. I mean, there's a lot of tall verticals out there. So it's, um, it, it is tough. It is really, really, really tough. And, uh, you know, it, yes, it requires power. But it requires, meaning scope, but it requires rideability, it requires carefulness, it requires smart riding to be yes. under the time allowed. It requires a really good partnership between horse and rider. And one of the things that's, that's pretty unique about the Sunday Grand Prix here at the Hampton Classic is that we're in the reverse order of finish of how the, the riders did on Friday. So the horses that are in the best form are still yet to come yes and the horses that you know are not in their best form you know are leading off the class and and i think the results reflect that i, I and agree. That's, that's the only exception there of course mary of course is me you. <laughs> well you're number two but i but i have a reason for that and also adrian sternlich and adrian exactly i think that you know there's no question you get here, it's Sunday, it's a four star, it's the Hampton Classic. We're gonna see the experienced horses and riders rise to the top. And right now we're looking at David Blake and he's been negotiating that uh, yes. triple very well. Yes, this is a lovely horse. He rides really well. They've had some really great classes in Florida. I would not be 
surprised if we see he's really smart about the time we're allowed. So he's, yeah. he's got yep. that cover. You can Very neat turns. The turns. And then <coughs> you have to get straight to that vertical, which he did. Um, I think we're, we're watching a really good round. I don't want to yeah, say Yeah, the to composure. It, it looks like they're really like in sync with one another. Here. And the two of them as a team are really focused and meeting each jump with composure and power and, really and attention. Now, how does the time look? Is well, Adele it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Oh. He's, okay. he, he's going to have a time fault. Oh, yeah, There's no question. The but he could go into the lead with one time fault. And he will. Yes. Got to love the roar of the crowd. Yeah. The crowd's impatiently waiting for a clean round. I mean, he did end up with one time fault. The VIP tents are full. The chalets are full. And then the U.S. Open grandstand on the far end of the ring is packed. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. This is so much fun. This sport deserves this adulation and deserves the support. If you watch equestrian competition, you have to love the Hampton Classic. I agree. Now, Ernie, so it begins. We've got gold medal, team gold medalist Devin Ryan and Eddie, his mount from the, the World Equestrian Games, gold medal partner Eddie Blue. The horse took a nice little breather after last year's um, exertion and championship jumping and is now just getting back to this level of sport to get ready to make a bid for next year's Olympic team. But this horse has power, he's careful. He's Devin's been on this be. stage before. This, this, is, this, this could be our first real clear round. This is a very big horse, tremendous scope. Double clear in the Nations Cup at Aachen uh, in 2018. Second in the World Cup Finals with this horse. Devin comes from New Jersey. He's spent some time working with Chris Kapler. It would be very surprising to see this horse have a back rail. It's just a matter of managing his big stride, scope, and ability. When you have a horse that's this powerful and this scopey, the, you know, what would normally be a bit of a forward line rides steady. steady. And it's almost hard to fit fit the strides in exactly. when you have such a incredibly powerful horse. Look at that tight turn. Little rub, but it's still up. Devin Ryan could be our first clear. He looks very, very tidy on his track. The big wall. That was beautiful. He does the six. He does the big horse six. Most have done the wide seven there. Look at how tight he is around the long jeans vertical going back to the Doha. This has caused trouble before, but not for Devin. He's got six seconds. He's well under the time. A little rub. There he That's is. That's how you do it. We have our first. First clear, Devin Ryan. That's what our sport to me is about. When you watch a, an amazing horse with a really good rider and they do it that beautifully, it's just a pleasure to watch. Wow. Super, super ride. Devin Ryan and his World Equestrian Games gold medal partner, Eddie Blue. He will be our trailblazer in the jump off, and odds are we're going to have one, Ernie. Now here comes one of your favorites. Absolutely. Georgina Bloomberg and her horse Charmore. Such a great person she yes. is. She gives so much of her time to support our different organizations here, animal adoption. Uh, what a great person. I could not agree more. <coughs> And I think she might have a shot. I stuck my neck out the other day, and well, you, but she did you, pretty you're, good. You're, you're, you made a good uh, prediction. Now this horse jumped beautifully, absolutely beautifully on Friday. It was really light off the ground, covering the back rail easily. So this is this is exciting. Georgina's been riding at the highest international level for 
five, six years now. I mean, she's always ridden at a high level, but I she's agree. been excelling I at agree. the international level. So an early rail, 4B is down. The back rail would be a little bit surprising given this horse's easy scope, the easiness with which this horse can cover and jump a wide, wide obstacle. Now, to she wants looks, to be a fast four, doesn't she, she? Yeah. To me today, it looks like the horse is just a little a little at at the bridle. It looks a little less settled. Maybe it's a little too fresh. I don't know. But normally, this horse purrs around a little bit more. Today, it looks a little... She does the six. Anything she can do to be a fast four falters. You know, in, in a big money class like this, a fa the fastest four falter is going to get like a, a very prize. nice check today. And a really slow four falter like me is going to be out of the money. Georgina Bloomberg. There right she goes. Under, yeah, great. I mean, that is really that terrific. That's too bad. If not for that one I know. that came down, she did very well. Yeah. Right into third place. So she's on the podium at the moment. But there's many horses to go. We're almost halfway through this exciting class. And there's a good chance that Georgina Bloomberg will get a piece of the action today, meaning a ribbon and some prize money. And next in the ring, we've got a nice shot of Victoria Birdsong. She's riding Gameco S. She rides with Elon Furter of Israel. And honestly, this young lady, you know, she's been really doing everything she can to further her riding career. She's riding anything, any horse that uh, anyone will offer her. Um, and she's just really made so much progress. She's had some excellent classes this week. She has, and she won the seven-year-old final, the seven-year-old class the other day. I think working for Alon has really been beneficial to her career. I mean, as much as she's, uh, fence two is down, that's too bad. Now the benefit of having an early rail, a little bit like Georgina, you is that you can be the fastest fast four falter. Now we'll see how much composure this young rider has to go out there and, and be the fastest four falter by three mm. seconds. We'll see. Someone like McLean well, Ward or, uh, or Kent yourself. Farrington. I think that takes the experience of a, of a seasoned rider to be able to do that. Now with that second rail down, that was fence five, jumping right into the corner, being the fastest four is no longer a possibility. Unlikely that eight faults is gonna be in the money today. I think, you know, you're gonna have enough clears and your a group of four falters will get a check. Yes. I think very interesting. There's no set number from fence nine to 10 to 11, that's that serpentine line, mm -hmm. but it's caused plenty of problems. It's hard. You know, when you combine that sort of serpentine S-like question at, with jumps of this size with a tight time allowed, it creates rails. It does, and it really shows us, you know, a horse like Eddie Blue, our clear round that we saw, they're so even on both leads. They're so well trained. We watched that dressage exhibition before the Grand Prix started, and yeah, and they that that S line that we're seeing is where we need that flat work. And a horse like Eddie Blue, experienced, beautifully ridden, beautifully trained on the flat, was able to navigate that well. And look who's in, McLean Ward, again. McLean Ward, it's easier to say what he hasn't won. We don't have enough time to not only name the Grand Prix that he's won, but the amount of medals that he's won, Pan American Games, World Championships, Olympic Games. When you talk about the best rider in the world, McLean Ward's name comes up. And, 100%. You know, and it's with another horse and a different horse and a different horse. Now, McLean Ward anchored the gold medal team at the World Equestrian Games of the United States just last September mm -hmm. in Tryon, North Carolina. Here he's on a, a new horse that he just acquired this winter, went double clear in the Nations Cup at Aachen, which is a venue that's very much like this. This is a, a really exciting new mount for McLean, and 
He also won a very, very big class at Dublin on this horse. Tremendous scope. Big class at Aachen on this one. Well, he, he went double clear in the, in the, in the Nations Cup. Right. I mean, McLean is a demonstration of position, execution, and feeling. And a top rider like McLean Ward or BZ Madden, they don't only ride so technically correct, but they ride with feeling. And then mentally, you just, and, and that a rail is down. You know, again, the time allowed is what forced McLean to make a tight turn. Now let's see how much time he can make up. He wants to be the fastest he four will falter. Definitely now, we're going to see him now spin back on this next Exactly. Jump. He's going to spin back. And whether With he does pace. nine strides home yeah. or whether he does ten, let's see. Still up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He does the nine. Look at his time. Yes. Four and a half seconds under the time allowed. He goes, Best time of the day so far. Yes. And that was a relatively late rail, so he didn't have the opportunity to be break 80 seconds, for example. But he's on the podium at the moment. He's in third place. Georgina also with a pretty fast four fault round in fourth. We've got one clear round. McLean's teammate Devin Ryan on Eddie Blue. David Blake from Ireland, one penalty fault. He's in second, McLean in third, and Georgina Bloomberg. This is a four-star international competition here at the Hampton Classic. We've got an absolutely phenomenal Grand Prix going. In the ring now is Molly Ash Cawley on her horse Cassandra. Molly's had a really good week. She's done everything but lead the victory gallop had many many ribbons this week this is a horse she has a lot of confidence in just to get you caught up with the standings we have one totally clear round and that's gold medalist Devin Ryan on his gold medal mount Eddie Blue in second place Ireland's David Blake with one time fault and the fastest four falter at this point in time is McLean Ward Molly Ash has made it through the first really hard part of the course. The triple combination comes early. It's 4 ABC, and now we have the water line. Making this course look very, very easy. A slow six strides to the Net Jets Oxer. That's come down a lot today. And now we come to a serpentine type pattern of jumps. Our course designer, Michelle Valiancourt, has asked a very unique and difficult question. Molly's still clear. She's coming to a wall. This is the first time we've seen it all week. She's doing the seven strides. Horse is jumping beautifully. She's two jumps from home. She's good on the clock. She's got, t oh my goodness, the Doha vertical is down. That's a meter 62 high. She's really good on the clock. Look at that time. Wow. That's going to her, put her into fourth place right behind McLean Ward. A beautifully ridden round. And that Doha Vertical, that's our, our main sponsor today, has come down an awful lot. It's maybe, maybe come down the most. Beautiful, beautiful ride. For sure Molly's going to win some money today with her beautiful mare, Cassandra. Elon Blumen's in the ring with J. Boston S.E. Getting a look at the big brick wall. This is the first time the horses have seen that obstacle this whole week. Uh, Michelle really waiting till Sunday. We have not jumped the double Liverpools all week. We have not jumped the big water all week. We have not jumped that big wall. A little bit of uh, Hampton Classic trivia. The Leone brothers and the Leone family did donate that wall to the Hampton Classic some number of years ago, so that's kind of fun. And on a Leone family note, I want to give a shout out to my nephews, up and coming show jumping stars, my nephew Mark, James, and David. They're watching live stream today. So back it's a family to family dynasty, isn't it? Well, it's a lot of fun. They're they're out there. They're watching. They're 
they're riding the courses with these riders and I could feel their support. So Elon Blumen, this is the first real question of the course for ABC. The triple is away from home, very scopy. Elon, a member of the Blumen riding family. There's five of them. Three brothers and one. Th oh, my goodness. The horse really looked at the water, but I think he made it. And the next jump is down. So four faults so far for Elon Blumen. The horse looks a little bit aggressive, a little bit hard in the mouth. You can, if you watch Elon's hands, you'll see that, you know, he's wrestling with the horse a little bit to, to fit in. And oh, he's a little deep there. Found his way over the back rail. What a family. S similar to your own. We have There's even brothers more of them. and cousins. and. If I include my nephews, we could take them on in a soccer game or a football game. or Maybe we could take them in hockey. I don't think they play too much hockey. Peter, growing up, did your family own a This is a very farm? good round. I'm sorry, Ernie. He's, he might even be under the time allowed. He's yeah, five faults. A little bit over on the time. So he's going to slide into eighth place with that four fault jumping round. One time penalty is a shade slower than I was. Thank goodness. Sorry, Elon. So he slides into eighth place. We still only have one clear round. You know, this week we had a table of, um, of women because it's a women's college, Holyoke College. And they have a major equestrian program, and that is wonderful. That one can go to, one can learn about equestrian yeah, sports. E e equestrian uh, intercollegiate equestrian competition is a huge sport. There's NCAA um, equestrian competition, which uh, has its finals every spring. Uh, the Georgia Bulldogs are big players. I know that. There's some other great colleges, and then there's IHSA which is the Intercollegiate Horse Show Association, and that's also a really big deal, which Mount Holyoke is part of. Next in rider the, in is Andrew Ramsey. Yes, Andrew Ramsey on the very fast, very careful horse, Stranger. He had one down in Friday's qualifier, and he was quite fast, and that's why he's going this late in the order. Remember, we're reverse order, finish A is down. If he doesn't have a number rail, if he does not have another rail, look for Andrew to be very fast. Trains with Olympic gold medalist Chris Kapler. He's good over the water. This is a very thoroughbred horse. It's a small horse. Very careful with its legs. It doesn't jump particularly high with its body, but boy, is it a careful horse. Second pole is down. You know, we don't see this that often. It's a, a very unique serpentine type line that Michelle Valiancourt has set, and it's caused plenty of problems. When you combine it with that tight time allowed, it's a very challenging uh, s sequence of obstacles to jump clear. Stranger is definitely not on his game today. You know, when they start hitting the jumps like that, it, the horse is undone and really uh, not, not one of Andrew and Stranger's best days for sure. But uh, he's won a lot of Flask Grand Prix. So we've got 17 riders left. We have only one clear round. And now we have, from Canada, one of the fastest most talented riders, not only in Canada, but in the world, Aaron Ballard, fresh off a very successful Pan American Games. And she, like myself, is riding a horse that's jumping meter 60 for the first time. Wow, that's something. This is a young horse. Look how composed, look at this. And when you have a young, talented horse like Aaron's riding, you need a experienced international rider like Aaron to guide the young, talented horse around a challenge like this here at the Hampton oh, let's Classic. Let's watch. This is beautiful. She only had one down on Friday. And let's see what this talented young horse can do. Well, you mentioned that she is fast. 
Well, if she's in the jump off, yeah, she's she's as fast as they come, and the odds are she'll be fast, you know, in terms of her time in the first round. She came in with a good head of steam to the triple. It worked. Horse a little bit wigwaggy. That's a very technical term, <laughs> wigwaggy. She's coming to the water line now. This is a meter sixty vertical. It holds the horses up a little bit. And then you ride up to the water. Super ride. She has the buttons in place, the rod. Oh, the back rail is down. Now you see Aaron taking a little time, but making a very short term. She did what we call a half halt on landing. Another pole is down. But it's, it's not a bad thing that if a young horse like this goes in and has, you know, two or three poles down. There's still a lot of future. Here's the double Liverpools. The horse a little green. You see how he opened up his front legs at 12A? But the experience and quality of Aaron Ballard's ride got him through without a penalty. She's going to have time faults. She could leave this last one up. She does. So, a, a total of nine penalty points. She goes into 12th place, so she's right in that last spot on the leaderboard. But most unlikely that she will be in the money today. Very challenging course today. So, guess what? We have another uh, member of the uh, Israeli Blauman family. Team. Yes, uh, Daniel Blumen. This is Stephen's brother. Uh, Daniel, uh, I'd have to say, has had the most success of all of the Blumen riders. He won the Grand Prix of Rome earlier this year on his great horse, Landriano. Uh, he's jumped at Aachen. He's won the, the big money cl finale class uh, in Wellington. He's jumped at Spruce Meadows. He's jumped in the Olympic Games. Daniel has an awful lot of experience for his young age. Now, <clears throat> we've been watching this horse all week, and one thing we know that it's very, very careful. And the question is, is it so careful it hang up and have a back rail? Now, it's been jumping looser and looser, meaning it's been covering the back rail more easily as the week has gone on. Daniel riding with a lot of composure. He's got a good amount of bit on this horse. You can see there's quite a large shank on the bit that Daniel's using. Look, Daniel really giving him a good ride. Horse handled the very scopy triple combination that requires a lot of power. Let's see how this horse handles the water. Will he give it a look? He made it to the grass, that's all that counts. Nice thing about riding a careful horse is you don't really worry about having a pole down, so you can you can really ride at the jumps. So far, so good. Daniel has won this Grand Prix before, again on that Olympic mount of his, Landriano. So winning this class is no strange, you know, uh, accomplishment for Daniel Blumen. He's got one vertical and one oxer to go. He's a little slow. I don't think he's gonna be under the time. But he could catapult himself into second or third place. The last is down. Oh my. What a heartbreak. And he's beyond the time also at 87.19. The last time is 86. That is really too bad. He so was Daniel, cutting it a little close. You were worried about the time you think yeah. he pushed it a little bit well i think he knew he had time faults and maybe he just got a little a little nervous he knew that that last jump is the widest oxer on course and knowing his horse maybe he just needed to trust that front rail a little more he just pushed him through that front rail and um that's really too bad he would have been right up there into uh, what would have been second place now in the ring Cormac Hanley from Ireland, riding VDL Cartello. Cormac originally came over and worked under the tutelage of Missy Clark and John Brennan, and then has since gone out and developed an absolutely fantastic string of horses 
very strong, very solid international rider. He's had a lot of great results. You know, he canters around this course like it's a, a meter 40 class. It's really great to see that kind of confidence and strength in a rider. You know, from the get-go, that triple combination is really a heck of a way to start, isn't it? The way this horse is jumping, Cormac could show his way to our second clear round. He's really seems dialed in today. Really beautiful position. And when a rider is tall and strong like Cormac is, it's important that they have good position. So he's got one down. That pole has come down a lot today. If it wasn't for the tight time allowed, that rail would not be coming down so much. He does the six strides. He does the six versus the steady seven. Still clear. He's pretty good on the clock. He's got 10 seconds to be under the time allowed. He could jump into the top five. And there he goes, right to fourth place. That was a really, really beautifully ridden round. Horse jump super, a bit unlucky. And again, the time allowed is what created that rail. So he, Cormac Hanley from Ireland is in fourth place right behind USA's McLean Ward. And at the top of the leaderboard so far, the one and only clear round, Devin Ryan on his gold medal partner, Eddie Blue. In the ring, now no stranger to excellence in the Sunday Hampton Classic Grand Prix is Brian Gutal Marteau. She's riding her number one horse, Viva Colombia. One of the amazing things about Brian is she has such softness and feeling combined with position and fluidity in her ride. And I, I don't mean to give her so many expected, expect, well, compliments, but she deserves them. She won all the equita equitation finals there were to win. And as a pro, she's one of the most beautiful riders on, in the world. What's so fascinating about her and also BZ Madden, who she did do some, some spend some time training with, is it wouldn't you can't tell the difference between Brian on Grand Prix Sunday and Brian in a meter forty class uh, on a Wednesday. Her her ride is so composed and so calm, with such feeling. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch, and that's something that you young riders watching today can really take from Brian Gutel. That jump's come down a lot, but not for Brian. The front of the Hermes is down. Again, the time allowed combined with the serpentine sequence of jumps has created poles. If you just joined us, Devin Ryan, our one and only, to post a clear round and uh, we need more than one in order to have a oh, jump there off. will be there will be she's going to be well maybe a little over we'll see she leaves it up but one time penalty a total of five faults she goes into 11th place we have five one, two, three, four riders with five time, five penalties, meaning one down and one time fault. At the moment, the fastest eight falter is holding the number 12th position. But much more important than that, our number one spot is Devin Ryan and Eddie Blue, the only clear round with no time penalties. David Blake from Ireland did master the course, no poles down, but he was two and a half seconds over the time allowed for one time penalty. Currently in third, McLean Ward, the fastest four falter, sitting in the bronze position. We're getting a nice shot of Allison Robitaille, U.S. rider on her number one horse named Ace. Allison's had a, a super week. She excelled with Ginger Pop. She was double clear in, in yesterday's Longines Cup Grand Prix. She 
has had fantastic results with every horse she's ridden. And Ace jumped a beautiful round in the Friday qualifier, just one time penalty. Ace is a very scopy horse. Allison's riding with an awful lot of confidence these days. Fact is, you need confidence. When, when the rider's confident, it gives confidence to the horse. Yes. Hand she in hand, that's for sure. Did a really good job of keeping her horse straight at the Jaguar vertical, jumping right into the corner. Six strides. Gives the water, the tape, a lot of room. That got very tight. Nicely done. Net Jets has been a bit of a problem today. The uh... Nice tight turn. That's a meter 60 vertical. There's an awful lot of organizing going on. Oh, boy, she's deep. Oh. And the back is down. Again, we haven't really seen this kind of serpentine sequence of obstacles that often. And we were marked on it uh, when we walked the course. Didn't really think too much so of it. So in deep, how many st strides should have she put into... Uh... Well, that's the thing. It's, it's not necessarily a set number of strides because it's such a rollback that you're, you're riding it off your eye. You've got a rough idea as to the number of strides you're, you're doing, but you're not locked in on it. So I actually would try to play out the nine strides to the Hermes Oxer, and I played it out, and it worked very well. And then I deliberately planned on doing no striding number to the wall because I wanted to jump that slow and straight to set the stage for me to do the wide seven strides to the double Liverpool. But in any event, it's, it's something we haven't seen very much. And I have to really take my hat off to Michelle Valiancourt for putting that uh, clever question in today's Grand Prix. Now we have a very exciting, very talented rider from Great Britain, Amanda Derbyshire on Cornwall. She's recently back from representing her country in the European Show Jumping Championships, where she was part of the bronze medal team. She's been jumping for Great Britain. She, I believe she for sure jumped in the World Championships in Tryon just last September for Great Britain. She's been training with Olympic individual gold medalist Nick Skelton and Laura Kraut. She's backed by the American show jumping family, the Gotchman family. But this young lady, she's a tiny little thing. But boy, is she fearless. She has, you know, the kind of character and guts that a Margie Engel has, a Meredith Michaels beer bomb. What a brilliant ride. She used her stick like a real pro. She just touched the horse behind the saddle at the stick at the water just enough to give that horse the confidence to jump high and over, but didn't use the stick with such force that it got the ho horse all nervous and rushed to start having poles down. Coincidentally, Amanda uh, is sweethearts with David Blake, our current silver medal position rider in the standings. Peter, how are we doing time-wise? She's got a little, a little, she's a little slow, and the pole uh, is down. She might be just under, oh, the, the last is down. It's fascinating how these last two jumps have come down because they're pretty much individual jumps. It's not like you have to do the, the four and the four and a half or the five and the four and a half to the Doha vertical. And then the last jump has come down a lot. I think the horses are just dizzy after all that turning and coming home, they're, they're just a little bit unfocused and, uh, and maybe a little bit empty. That's really too bad because she was putting in she was. a heck of a round. So Amanda Derbyshire goes into 15th place. That's off our leaderboard. Look who's riding up next. Richie Maloney. Oh, and actually, in the ring right now, we have Elon oh, Furter, Elon Furter yes. from Israel. He had a, a pretty good go in the Friday qualifier. That's why he's going so late right now. Um, he uh, backs and trains Aaron Ballard 
uh, who is, you know, a rising and, well, a shining star, forget rising star, a shining star for Canada. And let's see what Elon Furter can do over this Sunday Hampton Classic course. The back of B is down. He's over C. So he does have four penalty points as he rounds the turn to the water line. This is a meter 60 vertical. Very tall, very early, very airy. He's good at the water. It's a very scopey horse, very rangy, what we call. He has the ability to have a very big stride and then also a very short stride. A hard rub, but it stays up. So far, so good. If he could bring home a four-fault round, he could find his way onto the leaderboard. The double Liverpools, no problem. He is a little bit slow. He's got ten, nine seconds, eight seconds to finish. That Doha vertical has been coming down so much. And I, I had it down, and I must say, as a rider, I really, I'm still scratching my head because we shouldn't be having it down that, that regularly. But are you turning into it? Is that, is that the issue? Well, it's, it's off a short turn, or we want it to be a short turn because of the time allowed, but it's got a, a lot of contrast to it. You know, it's the kind of jump that, you know, as a horseman, I would expect the horses to back off and jump quite well. All right, so. Here he is, Richie Maloney. Richie Maloney is in. He's riding Roxy Music. He had a very, very good uh, qualifier on this horse just two days ago. He's in second place in the leading rider standings. And he's going to have to all but win today to overtake Adrian Sternlich, who's currently in seventh place. Adrian had a, a third place finish in yesterday's Saturday Grand Prix, which really gave her quite a lead in the leading rider standings. That's a Lawn Jeans sponsored title, along with winning a beautiful Lawn Jeans watch. $30,000 check, winner take all. So let's watch Richie Maloney. He's got a lot riding on this round. Really did a beautiful job arriving at that meter 60 vertical, keeping his upper body tall so his horse could get its front end up and over. Good strong ride through the triple. No problem with the Jaguar. Richie has won the leading rider title four of the last seven years. He's no stranger to pressure. Little late at the water, but he makes it to the grass. Look at him, he's got to fit it in. Oh, he it. snaked over wow. that. Wow. As close as it gets. That's what you call grit and try. Oh. Again, like the Doha vertical, why that has been coming down. So now look at Richie pick it up. He wants to be a fast falter. He was originally riding for a, a clear round. Now he wants to be a fast four falter. See how tight he turns. Look at that. He is going to be fast. If he can leave them up. Oh, oh. my goodness. The Doha is down. That horse jumped six inches too low. That's really too bad. So he's in in a very good time of 82 seconds. But two down. That will put him into 12th place. He is the fastest eight falter. Adrian Sternlich is in seventh place. Has finished ahead of him. And I don't have the all of the... The, the tallies in front of me, but I believe Adrian Sternlich is going to walk away with her first leading rider title here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show, the Lawn Jeans Leading Rider Award. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if she's out celebrating in the schooling area. Well, what a what an accomplishment that would be for this uh, young rider who schools with uh, McLean Ward. That's correct. Now Scott Keach is in the ring from Australia. This is a great story. He came here with two horses. He went clear on Friday with his Olympic Mount Fedora who is showing today. 
He went clear yesterday with his number two horse, Picabello. Again, got a good piece of the Saturday Grand Prix. And here he is. This is, his, I believe, his first time at the Hampton Classic. And then he's going to go on to the Gold Cup. It's great to see some of the top foreign riders come in and jump our our crown jewel competitions. Scott has an awful lot of experience and he and this horse know each other like the back of you know like the back of Fedor's hoof and mm -hmm. Scott's hand. It's a very scopy horse. He he can be a little bit slow, but because oh the back is down. But because they know each other so well, Scott knows how to be under the time allowed. Does the seven strides. This horse doesn't even look, not even looking at the double liver pools. Just going around like a fox hunter. But it's, it's Scott that's making it look so easy. Come on, Scott. He's good on the clock. So a beautiful, beautiful round. Nicely done within the time allowed of 86 seconds. He has four faults, but a time of 83.85. That's putting him at the sixth place at this point. That serpentine sequence of jumps that Michelle Valiancourt said it was the culprit again. This time it was the back rail of the Hermes Oxer. Lily Keenan is next, and she impressed us early on in this week. Now, will she have... And her uh, mount is Diablo. Is that how you pronounce that? Lily Keenan on faster. Oh, well, she's on. Uh, she's on faster. Faster. All right. Yeah. Well, that's what we need. Fast and high. Now, McLean Ward tutors Lily at this point in her career. Lily, uh, uh, you know, won every equitation final there was to win. That at that time she was riding with the. Amazing Andre Dignelli, what an, what an incredible trainer. So her style, like a Brian Gutal, like a McLean Ward, is just impeccable. McLean Ward gave this horse a little flat this morning with Lily and support team watching. Oh, the horse weaved and the back rail is down. Did you see the horse, you know, jump out to the right uh, between B and C and then that really made it hard for the horse to do that, that two strides and clear the back rail of C. Now, Lily's got a lot of international experience. She has jumped for the US team. She's competed in Dublin, Ireland. She's won in young riders. So she, she knows that if she could be a fast four falter, she could win some nice money today. Negotiating the horse is really getting a bit mouthy. You can see Lily doing everything she can oh. to to get the horse's control. You know, get the the mouth to soften up a little bit. <clears throat> so that's a disobedience. It ran out to the right at the the brick wall. That's a over a meter sixty high. So here she comes back. She's going to regroup. So it becomes a good uh, schooling lesson. There we go. Now, Lily, being a, a U.S. team rider, wants to show U.S. chef to keep Robert Ridlin that if she gets into trouble, she can still finish the course. She's not going to withdraw or retire or let the course beat her. And that's an important attribute for a young rider to, to, to you know, to establish uh, when they, when they want to represent the United States of America in international competition. Now, Peter, here's a great story. Our next rider up next is Mario Delorier. <laughs> Credentials, success, unbelievable. But also in our group to follow Mario. Right, his daughter. Lucy Delorier will be going last. Uh, but let's, let's go over Mario. Mario, an incredibly accomplished international rider in his own right at the young age of 18, won the World Cup Finals in Gothenburg, Sweden, for Canada on the amazing horse Aramis. He's then gone on and won countless international Grand Prix on other horses. 
And then he rode for America for a number of years, jumped in the world championships in, in Lexington, Kentucky, riding Jane Clark's wonderful horses. And now he's back to Canada. This is a marvelous, marvelous mare that uh, Mario is riding. He'll be riding this horse in Calgary at the, uh, the big show in Spruce Meadows next week. Mario knows how to jump a course of this magnitude and he's familiar with the pressure. They say there's nothing like a good mare and Bordelina is a nice example of that. To say that we're all at the edge of our seat hoping for a, another clear round. Oop, the mare jumped a little shallow at the water. Let's see. Looks like he made it. Mario's a very fast rider. Like a Brian Gutal, he rides with the motion. You see that he's in a light seat with his upper body inclined forward. The mare jumping very well. Mario being very, very tidy on his turns. He's doing the seven strides. This could Nicely be our second done. clear round. Nice, he's, he looks good on the clock. Now this has been so difficult today. He he's it. done it. He's got one jump to go. He's good on the clock. Watch that front rail. Yeah. Mario Delorier. <laughs> we will have a jump off and Mario Delorier. Look at that time. 82.56 seconds. Brilliant, brilliant ride. So we've got two incredibly experienced international riders that have put forth clear rounds oh, in today's wow. Doha $300,000 Grand Prix. Mario Delorier of Canada joins USA's Devin Ryan. We will have a jump off. Wow. Peter, you predicted it, that there would be another rider in. Now the question is, who will be joining Mario and Devin in our jump off? Will now it be? Have, now we have another Canadian on his way to the first jump. This is Jonathan Miller, son of legendary Captain Canada, Ian Miller. And we're gonna see Amy Miller a little bit later who was third in the Friday qualifier. Jonathan was double clear, and that's why he's such good order. Uh, he was double clear in the Friday qualifier. They both have different attributes of their father. I'd say that uh, in appearance, uh, Jonathan obviously looks more like his dad on a horse, but Amy's got that, that fight and free, for, look at that. He had, went to a stick to get over the B element. So now he's four faults. The question is, can he be a fast four faulter? If he could be the fastest four faulter, he'll go right into fourth place, currently held by McLean Ward. This is a very big horse. We'll see what Jonathan could do. Look at him land and pick it up. But the faster you go, the more risk you have of having another pull down. So far, so good. Pretty much every part of the course has caused problems today. We've seen absolutely every jump come down. Six strides to the double Liverpools. He's good on the clock. Oh, the Doha is down again. I, I'm still scratching my head why that's coming down so much. So he's under the time allowed, just under with two poles down a score of eight faults and that is going to miss our leaderboard he goes into 17th remember there's 12 monies the 12th place position is currently held by daniel blumen but most important we have two clear rounds usa's devin ryan and canada's mario deloria they are completely penalty free no jumping faults no time faults here we have five uh Entrance, competitors Five to go. left to go, and they get better and better. So don't be surprised if uh, three of the next five go clear. We have Jonathan Corrigan from Ireland. Now, everybody comes into these big competitions with a different strategy. Jonathan knows this horse really well. He has a lot of confidence in this horse. He, um, he didn't jump a single class until the qualifier on Friday. 
in which he went and did a beautiful double clear. I mean, he and this horse look like they're just going for a nice jump, tremendously scopy. And Jonathan is a very, very cool rider. He rode for his home country of Ireland in uh, at least one Nations Cup. I believe it was in Wellington a few years ago. The one time he did this Sunday Grand Prix, he did get a ribbon. See how he does today. Again, making it look so easy. That is a very big horse. In order to be under the time allowed, Jonathan has to make very tight turns because the horse is not one of those quick across the ground types. No problem with the back rail. The big wall. Does the seven strides. I don't think the horse has touched a jump. He's pretty slow, though. There's no way he's going to make it under the time allowed. The Doha vertical, it's up. Come on, Jonathan. Leave it up. So Jonathan Corrigan joins his fellow Irishman, David Blake, with one time penalty. He goes into fourth place. You know, it really looked like he was thinking about jumping clear and really wasn't worried about the time allowed. I mean, he was almost three seconds over the time allowed. But uh, I have to applaud his strategy. He's sitting in fourth place in a $300,000 Doha Hampton Classic Grand Prix. Congratulations to Jonathan Corey. He's going he's gonna to end up with a really nice placing. So we've got four to go. Shane Sweetenham, winner of yesterday's Longines Cup Grand Prix on Spy Coast Farms homebred Kaiser Washer. This Chalky Z, son of the incredibly successful and prominent show jumping stallion Chaco Blue. This horse was clear and fourth in the Grand Prix qualifier on Friday. Had a little bit of time off and is now recently back to this big level of sport. This was Shane, one of Shane's number one horses and now is again. Shane recently back from the European Show Jumping Championships where he and his countrymen from Ireland did not have the the championships that they wanted. They did not secure a berth to the Tokyo Olympic Games, so they're going to have to make it happen in Barcelona. Shane, quite a fast rider. He's got so much experience at this point for Ireland, jumping in Olympic Games and in World Championships and European Championships. I mean, he's about as experienced as they come. So far, so good. He hasn't even rubbed a pole. Unless Shane's unlucky. We're looking at our third clear round. He's good on the track. There he did the eight strides. <coughs> For sure he did that to save time. Let's see what he does here. Oh. And it's down. He's wow. very good on the clock. This last jump has been a heartbreak. He's leaving the stride out. He's left it up. Look at that time. 81.68. He goes right behind McLean Ward, and that's the mark of a real seasoned international rider to be the fastest, you know, to be one of the fastest four falters. Now, unfortunately for Shane, he had like the third to last jump down, so he didn't have a lot of time to, to make up. So Shane Sweetenham goes into sixth place. We have three more competitors to uh, take place in today's competition, but we only have two that have qualified for our jump off. That's right. Now, on a little fun note before uh, the, the fantastic instinctive rider Amy Miller uh, picks up her gallop, I'm sitting on what we call the bubble. I'm sitting in 12th place right now. So any one of the next three riders that beats me, I'm out of the money, Ernie. I'm not feeling it. 
because Amy's absolutely a fantastic rider. She's riding her Mount Truman. She was third in the Friday qualifier. She's in good form. She's dialed in. Let's see what she can do. If she can join fellow Canadian Mario Delorier in the jump off. Truman formerly ridden by, by dad, Ian Miller. Amy also a very, very technical rider, but she's got a lot of fight, a lot of grit. You know, when something goes a little bit off kilter, she finds a way to make it work. Truman and Amy jumping very, very well. Now this jump's come down a lot. Every single jump has come down. And it's down again. The horse shifted right there. She's pretty good on the clock. Double liver. Oh, the B element is down. So eight faults. She will not be in the top 12 today, but she had a fabulous class on Friday. So nine faults for Amy Miller and her Mount Truman. We're still looking at a two horse jump off with two riders to go. If you're uh, joining us, uh, this has been an outstanding Hampton Classic Grand Prix. Difficult is, uh, is an understatement. Yeah, it, you know, it's actually a, a drama. Drama um, for real. As a competitor, I love a class or a course, a challenge, where there's only two or three clear, you know, maybe four clear. I absolutely love that. And I, I understand and I respect that from a spectator perspective, uh, when you have 10 clear, you've got a, you know, uh, a jump ball for everybody's, you know, putting it all out on the field. But, um, you know, every once in a while, uh, we have this kind of epic show jumping where who can master this incredibly difficult course that Michelle Valiant Corps set. And that's what we have today. And when you come to the Hampton Classic, this is the kind of challenge you expect on Grand Prix Absolutely. Sunday. Absolutely. In the ring, Andy Coker from USA. He was second in the Grand Prix qualifier. Andy fresh off winning the Queen Elizabeth Cup and at Spruce Meadows in Calgary, Canada. Now he's really keeping this wonderful horse very, very organized. And with this horse, Andy is one smooth, beautiful rider. Gets a little deep. This horse has huge scope. The back rail is down. Now, Andy's a very smart rider. When he comes to a show, he has one revenue source, and that's prize money. So he's going to be a really, he's going to do everything he can to be a fast four falter. And if he's successful, he will bump me down to 13th place. And look, at he left out a stride because Andy wants to be fast. I want Andy to get a check, but that's some smart riding. But along with the risk, of trying to be the fastest four falter, you run the risk of more likely having a pull down. He's got four obstacles to go. Look at it. this horse is really strong. And he's sitting way back in the saddle to make it happen. He's good on the clock. If he can leave these last two up, he'll be right up in the top six. Come on, Andy. There it is. Well, he's going to slide into 11th place. He was a pretty slow four falter, but he is in the money. He will, no matter what Lisa, Lisa Deloria, Deloria, forgive me, Lisa Delorier does, he will win a check today. And I can stop holding my breath. Ernie, I am officially out of the money. I am 13th. Peter, you... You did pretty good starting this. I hung in there to the second to last horse. Yes, oh my God. yes, you did. And Made now it exciting we... for us. But this is a story now. It's Lucy Delorier who's in now. Her father has already qualified for our jump off. Can the daughter make a way into the uh, 
jump off. And she that, certainly very well could. She's off to Spruce Meadows uh, next week with this very horse. Uh, fresh back from uh, contributing to a team bronze at the Pan American Games about a month ago. She's really continued to become better and better and better on this horse. She was second in the Grand Prix qualifier last year here at the Hampton Classic and was unable to compete on Sunday because she was just too young. But this year she can compete. She won the Grand Prix qualifier and the big difference that I see in Lucy's partnership with Hester is she's got the rideability more in place because when she would have a problem with Hester, it would be because he would get a little bit strong and, and she wouldn't be able to really manage the, uh, his arrival at the jumps, the rideability. But the rideability is so much better. It's a very, very scopy horse. And this horse absolutely loves Lucy. He jumps his heart out in addition to having championship ability. We talk about championship ability. We, you know, we refer to the ability to jump meter 60, meter 65 verticals, meter 70, meter 80. How are we doing? Oxers. How are we doing? She's going clear and she's good on the clock. She's done it. Wow. <laughs> now that's a story. Father and daughter, Lucy Delorier, one of our three in the jump off with Devin Ryan. We've got ourselves a great jump off. What a pressure ride for that young lady. And a for great the USA. story. My wow. goodness. This is exciting. So again, to repeat, we have three riders that will be participating in our jump off. Peter, if, uh, if you may. Okay, leading us off is American Devin Ryan on his gold medal mount, Eddie Blue. He's got experience, he knows how to win, he knows how to win out of the number one spot. Going second, the very fast, very experienced Mario Delorier on the careful mare Bordelina. And then going last, Mario's daughter, Lucy, on the incredible Hester. Lucy won the Friday Grand Prix. Can she join a very, very select few in the history of the Hampton Classic and win both Friday and Sunday. She's in the catbird seat. She goes last. She'll know what she has to do. And Peter, you uh, have some information for us regarding the Longines, uh, yeah? Well, Irish rider Sh Shane Sweetenham has won the Longines leading rider title by virtue of his fantastic win yesterday in the Longines Cup and then placing very, very high up in today's standing. I believe he finished like fifth or sixth. An absolutely brilliant week for Shane Sweetenham of Ireland. He is our Longines leading rider for the right, 2019 go Classic. To our uh, animation. Here Please, we go. Peter. This is the jump off. This is where we find out who wins today. It starts out over the original fence two. The riders want to make a sharp right to left angle and gallop over to the original fence three. That's a meter 60 Douglas element vertical. And then there is a set striding to just 4A, the beginning of the combination. I think they're going to be able to get inside the water to gallop over to the Hermes Oxer. It caused a lot of trouble in the first round. Then you fly on over make a tight turn on the double Liverpools. That's an Oxer vertical in and out. And then a tight turn. There's nothing in the way back on the Doha vertical. This is meter 62 high. And then it's the run for home. We saw some riders do nine strides to the last in the first round to save time. What will they do in the jump off? And that's our jump off animation. And wow, it's a what wonderful a, jump what a over. picture. A nice number of left turns and right turns places to gallop, places to make short turns. There's right, a shot of we, the Doha obstacle, We number focus 13. our attention to the field, and uh, I see Alan Healy is out there, ready to uh, announce the, proclaim the <laughs> start of this uh, jump. Alan Healy's gonna be sounding the call. Now, with three horses in it, 
What's the strategy? That's really the question that the riders are, are thinking through right now. And when you only have three in a big money class like this, you've, it's a little more like chess. There really is a strategy involved. Unlike when you have 15 horses in a jump off, that's more like poker. You know, and you're, you're going to have to go out and lay it down. So let's see what these exciting, experienced riders do to determine who's going to win. Going last is a big, big advantage, Ernie. And going last today will be? Lucy Delorier. I mean, she's very young, but boy, she has ice water in her veins, and she's riding her trusted partner, Hester. Before her, her father is going, Mario Delorier, representing his home country of Canada. He's on a very, very fast mare. And then you've got Devin Ryan, who knows how to win on a big stage like this with the big strided, big jumping Eddie Blue. He can make turns right up there with McLean Ward. He really knows how to you know, make up against it up by using his stride and making tight turns. Mario Delorier will be using ground speed. Lucy Delorier, she'll be using a combination of both. She can turn and she's got a huge stride. Unbelievable. You could feel the excitement, the tension. This has been an exciting time here at the Hampton Classic, which began on uh, Sunday, and now we are here at Grand Prix Sunday. So stay with us. Alan Keeley. So going first, USA's Devin Ryan. This horse has taken a little bit of a breather this past summer. And this is the beginning of Devin's journey to next year's Olympic Games, if everything goes to plan. Getting a look at the Hermes Oxer on his entrance. Looking over where he's going to go. You can see him riding the course with his eyes. We've got three experienced riders. Devin Ryan has signaling the judges to give his horse a moment to finish his business. There's a lot of ground to cover on this big field. It all starts with a big gallop. Ryan Br Devin getting his lead. He's going to try to angle fence one right to left. What a scopey horse. Oh, he's deep. It's down. He went out there to take a shot and made a mistake. He's inside, he still wants to be a little fast because the others that come after him, Mario and Lucy, if they have a pole down, Devin wants to be faster. Now we do a turn on the double Liverpools. Two jumps to go, this Doha meter 62 vertical caused a lot of trouble in the first round. The nine got very slow. So, one down, 42.66 seconds. Devin knows he's not, it's unlikely that he's gonna win today. That's really too bad. He went out gangbusters, got too deep to number two, the Douglas Elliman vertical, it came down. I know he's disappointed, but we've still got two top international riders to go. Well, the Delorier family knows that one of the two of them could win this class today, a clear round, will take home top prize in the Doha Hampton Classic Grand Prix. Be interesting to see what Mario does. I would think the strategy of a neat clear round, and then if his daughter goes in and beats him, well, it's all in the family. Amazing. I don't know if that's ever happened before here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show where the last two riders are father and daughter and what, what competitors they are.
Mario, being neat and prompt, but not, you know, in, you know, leaving it all out there on the table. Now he's got the double Liverpools. Still up. Still up. Two jumps to go. He's got to leave this tough jump up. He has. He's done the nine strides. It's up. He's clear. All right. Time of 42.82. And Mario Delorier from Canada has jumped him way in, his way into the top spot here in the Doha $300,000 Hampton Classic Grand Prix. What a brilliant, brilliant ride. A very smart ride. Wow, that was a very smart ride. Very smart. Careful, careful mare. Top jockey. So the Delorier household has won this year's 2019 Hampton Classic Grand Prix. But who's going to be the winner? Father Mario or daughter Lucy? You would think Lucy has nothing to lose by going out to try to beat her dad. The worst she can be is third. Well, and, that is and amazing. the family still wins. And he posted a very fast time. So let's watch. We're all holding our breath. Personally, I'd like to see the USA win. As the eight strides, horse is jumping very well. She got inside, did not slip the way dad did. It's still up. She's got one in and out and two jumps to go. She can leave this up. <clears throat> I think she's faster, there's no question. Look at that turn. Do it, Lucy. Oops, 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 oops. Oh. She had oh, the that's time. Such a shame. But the rail went down and Mario Deloria is our winner of the Hampton Classic Grand Prix 2019 and edition. What a story. Absolutely fantastic. And Lucy, by virtue of her very fast time, goes into second place. So Canadian Mario Delorier walks away with the top prize. USA's Lucy Delorier and USA's Devin Ryan complete the podium in the silver and bronze position. Wow. What an exciting. Let's look at our uh, leaderboard here and our winner today is Mario Delorier, number one position. Peter, our winner of today's Hampton Classic Grand Prix, Mario Delorier, is coming into the ring. The presentation, the honors. We're going to be hearing the Canadian look, look at the National cameras. Anthem. Look at, look at all the cameras. I mean, to the winner goes the spoils. Amazing. And there's a lot of spoils out there for the winner of the Hampton Classic. But what a talented rider. And it's one of those incredible sports where when you're, you don't have to be 25 years old to be at the top of the sport. The lifespan of a top rider is a decade. And how, I don't know if you know the answer. I know uh, Marty would probably have the statistic on this, but uh, Mario, has he ever won the Hampton Classic? I don't think so. I, mean, I know he's amazing. been very, this very is, close. He, he's come I don't, close. I, I don't believe he has. And he's participated here for a number of years. How well deserved that is for Mario Delorier to win today's Hampton Classic Horse Show. Here's Mario Delorier with his wonderful 10-year-old oh mare, Bordalina, owned by Rosalind Look Schaefer. This. this is exciting. Gorgeous, a gorgeous round of honor. Wow! Look at this. And then Lucy Delorier right behind in second. Devin Ryan for the USA in third on his gold medal mount. Eddie Blue, and behind these three gold, silver, and bronze Hampton Classic winners is the leading rider presented by Longines Shane Sweetnam. What a great shot! Fabulous, fabulous mare. There's. And the mayor's only 10 years old. Uh, the best, her best years are ahead of her, which is so exciting. 
Nicely done. Mario the Laurier. And Mario's been Look working. Look at that. Look at our crowd. The crowd the loves adulation. it. They love it. They love it. Great show. Great yeah. show, everyone. And he really is. to Mario and to all of our riders and horses. You uh, guys have given us a great number of days here at the Hampton Classic Horse Show. And it's our pleasure to be able to bring this to our viewers and, and audience live. Well, that is amazing. You're watching the Hampton Classic Horse Show on WVVH-TV. Hampton's Television.